Hello. Thank you for coming. My name is Sean Moth. I'm going to be your master of ceremonies today as we celebrate the 2013 University of Louisville women's basketball team, the NCAA national runner-up. Never in the history of the women's tournament has the team won four games they weren't supposed to win by the seeding. The Louisville Cardinals are the first, and we are here to honor them today. We are also here because the 2013 University of Louisville men's basketball team are the national champions. It was a team that from our perspective we'd seen all year long and we've been through it all with this team here in this building and on the road. It's also a team that captured the imagination and the hearts of people across the country and around the world. And we are here to celebrate. It is the third NCAA championship for the men's team. And as many of you may know, I love the number three. But before we get to that, speaking of national champions, I want to first point out a thanks to the Cardinal Pride Pep Band under the direction of Mr. Al Greener for their tireless efforts on the road supporting our teams in the tournament every venue all season long. And conspicuous by their absence, our national champion cheerleaders and ladybirds as we speak are in Daytona, Florida trying to add to their 30-plus national championships, so we wish them luck. And one more thing about national champions. It got a little overshadowed because of this hoops thing, but the University of Louisville has another national champion, and he is here with us now. Please welcome to the stage, Junior from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Joao de Luca. Joao is the second national champion in the program swimming and diving history. He posted the third fastest time in the history of the 200 free at the NCAA championships in Indianapolis the same day the cards were there in Naptown. He qualified in a very tight match, I believe seventh, which put him in an outside lane. And if you know swimming, it's a tough place to win from. That didn't stop him. What was going through your mind when you got on those blocks trying to win a national championship? Uh, before the, my race started, I knew that I had all the potential. I'm as likely as everyone else. I had two legs and two arms, but at that night, my heart said louder, and I, I knew that I was going to win. You were with the Brazilian national team in 2012 and didn't get the opportunity you'd hoped. You're a junior here. We've got him another season here. He finished in the top five in two other races. He finished third in the 100 free, and he was part of a 400 relay team that finished fourth. But the Olympics Summer Games in 2016 are in Rio, and that's home. Tell me about that. Uh, going to 2012 Olympics was phenomenal. Uh, it was a great experience that brought me more confidence to swim NCAA and bring the national title. And I am really, I'm really stoked for the fact that we're going to host the Olympic 2016. And all I, I can thank for all the, this university, this crowd here, for all the support. This is awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, national champion Joao DeLuca.
Space, your NCAA National Runner-Up, University of Little Cardinals. We begin with our support staff. Please welcome Director of Olympic Sports Performance, Tina Murray. Graduate Assistant Coach, Candice Bingham. Our video coordinator, Devlin Paul. Executive Director of Basketball Operations and Color Analyst for the radio broadcast, AJ Adrian Johnson. Your Director of Basketball Operations, Mary Beth. Now we introduce to you assistant coach for the Cardinals, Samantha Williams. Assistant coach, Cameron Bauer. Associate Head Coach, Stephanie Norman. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the team. On the injured list, please welcome a forward from Marion, Ohio, number 12, Sean. A guard from the bill, number 25, Tia Gibbs. A forward from Columbus, Ohio, number 31, Asia Taylor. forward from Surprise, Arizona, number 13, Courtney Walton. A freshman guard from Springfield, Missouri, number 15, Megan Diamond. Guard from 
from the Big Apple, number 21, Bria Smith. A junior guard from the Louisville Christian Academy, number four, Nita and a junior guard from Mission, Oregon, number 23, Shawnee Simmons. The head coach of your Yoda Cards, Jeff Wallace. gentlemen a sophomore guard from the Big Apple number five Kevin Sophomore guard 
from the Windy City, number 20, Wade Blackson! Welcome to sophomore forward from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 21, A junior guard from Lexington, Kentucky, number 32, Michael Bapple. A junior guard from Little Christian Academy, number 15, Tim Henderson. A junior forward from Roanoke, Virginia, number 11. <laughs> and center, a junior from Kevemer, Senegal, number 10, Doggy
basketball trainer, Red Pina. Director of Operations, Andre Ricky. Please welcome assistant coach, Assistant Coach Kevin Keats. Assistant Coach Y King Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of your 2013 NCAA National Champion, the Royal Cardinals, Mark Latino! Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, please welcome to the stage, University of Louisville President, Dr. James Ramsey. Okay, I've got a question I want to ask you. Is it a pretty good time to be a University of Louisville Cardinal? One more question. What do you think about these University of Louisville Cardinals right up here? We're here this afternoon to recognize these outstanding individuals, to honor them and to say thank you to them because they're special. But before we continue, there's one other group that I want to thank, and that's you, the fans of the University of Louisville, the best fans in the United States of America. You were with us in the first round in Louisville, and you painted Lexington red and made it red arena. You were with us in Oklahoma City, and you were with us in Indianapolis. And you were with us in Atlanta and New Orleans. Give yourself a big round of applause. A lot of people have asked me, can it get any better than this? 2013, what a great year. But you know, when you think back, it's good to think back at how we got to this place. And I think back to 1997, and the people of Kentucky said to the University of Louisville, we expect you to be among the very best universities in this country. And that's what we work toward every day. And in 1997, the University of Louisville hired Tom Jurich to be its athletic director, and that's what he's worked for for 15 years. The greatest athletic director in America, Tom Jurich.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. As Doc, Dr. Ramsey put it so great, how great, it, how great a time is it to be a Cardinal? It's absolutely unbelievable. And to all these wonderful fans, it was just remarkable to see you everywhere we turned. And, and in Lexington, to start the run for the men was unbelievable. How you took over Rupp Arena and turned it completely red. Then the magical weekend up in Indianapolis where they announced a record crowd of 34,000 and you that didn't go the dome, they only used one half of the dome for the, to make the stadium. So of the 34,000 after the game, they told us University of Louisville brought 30,000. I don't want to offend anybody by saying you're not, you're not the greatest sixth man, but I think we all witnessed the greatest sixth man in the final four. So take your hat off and be the greatest seventh man for that weekend. And then the, the wonderful fans of ours that traveled in, to Atlanta and the ones that couldn't make it, everybody felt the love that you sent out to us. That's what makes this such a special place. And then what we did in Jeff Walls' run, Jeff hosting the tournament here. Letting our fans be a very, very special part of the NCAA tournament. The very first one we've ever been able to host for the women. And you blew through that, upset a, bit, a Purdue team, and then you went on to a monumental trip to Oklahoma City. For you to knock off Baylor, and what everybody is calling the greatest upset in women's basketball history, unbelievable. Take that win, and I'm going to tell you what Coach said to me last night, Coach Patino, as we went down to New Orleans. He said he thinks even a greater accomplishment was to be able to do it two nights later against Tennessee. To keep your team at that high level and, and play great. And I can tell you, these wonderful young ladies, they outplayed Tennessee by much more than an eight-point spread, and we are so, so proud of all of you. So then we have... Then we have it, we have the men and the women tying history and going on to the Final Four. A remarkable achievement in itself. So then we come down to the first game against Wichita State and Cool Hand Coach, Cool Hand Luca, that's, that's been overused, so Cool Hand Coach, we're down by 12, he never starts even sweating. He never starts sweating. And Coach, I thought that was one of your greatest moments since, since you've been here. And you pulled that team against a great Wichita State team. That wasn't a good one. And then the following day, Jeff, Jeff is an underdog again. His ladies are underdogs against Cal, a very, very athletic, very big team, and they ran them off the court in the second half, and you did a marvelous job. And then we go last night, last night we go to, to New Orleans to watch the, the, our wonderful women, and they had a tough night. It was over there. UConn is an icon in this business, something that we're going to strive to get to, and we are going to get to, but you look at the strides that we've made as an athletic program, and more importantly, as a women's basketball program, we will catch them and surpass them, I promise you that. And then let's, let's go back to Monday night, and what a night it was. The largest crowd the largest crowd in Final Four history saw what the CBS people told me after the game. It was the greatest game in 25 years of an NCAA championship game. And again, we fall down by 12 points. Coach doesn't waver, maybe a little bit, but he, he didn't waver a bit. Pulled the team together and then Luke, Luke took over and then the rest of it was history. And what an unbelievable job. What an unbelievable job by these wonderful young, young men and coaches. You know, we're very blessed at, at the University of Louisville. I always say this is the most unique institution in the country. I said it many years ago, this is the best college sports town in America, and I got, I got criticized for it. I, would, I wouldn't take that line away from anybody. This is the best college sports town in America. 
We have the best president of the university. Doc Ramsey's the very best. We got the greatest coaches all across the board, and many of them are here tonight. But without a doubt, we got the two finest be basketball coaches in America. I wouldn't trade any of our coaches for anybody. But let me ask you, what a, how about a good day on Monday? You wake up and you're, in the, you're inducted into the uh, Basketball Hall of Fame, and Monday night you win the national championship. Unbelievable. I, I want to end real quickly. I want to end simply as I began and thank you fans for all the wonderful support we've had for the men and women's program and for all of our athletic programs. This isn't just going to be a basketball event. We've got world champion and NCAA champion swimmers and baseball and softball and golf and tennis and track. Everybody's coming. Lacrosse is doing a marvelous job. All of our sports across the board and it's because we have a very unique thing at the University of Louisville. We're a family. We are a family that embraces this community. And we thank you so, so much. Thank you all for being here.
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the podium, Louisville's own, Nina Slaughter. Now, ladies and gentlemen, also from Louisville, Monique Reed. Our fans are amazing, the best in the country. It was a great run, and it was an amazing way to end my senior year. And I just want to say thank you, and a special thanks to my family, right in the front row. And it means a lot to me, because I'm a hometown kid, so I love my city, and we, all this is for you guys. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, Shoni Schimmel. Um, I just want to say thank you to all the fans, and um, it just, it's like another home out here for me, being so far away from home. It, it, this is my second home, and I just want to say thank you to all the fans and everybody out there supporting everyone. I mean, it means a lot to us, especially the ones far away from home. So thank you for everything and we'll be back next year, don't worry.
ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome to the microphone, Luke Hancock. Thank you for all you guys coming out and supporting us all year long. Um, you know, I, I haven't been to Louisville very long, but uh, you know, I've been here for two years, and all we know is Louisville and Final Fours. So I love you guys. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Peyton Seaborn. Thank you guys for all the love, the care, and support you guys have shown us, my family, and friends, all of my teammates. I want to give a special shout out to the girls team, the tremendous job they did this year. So. I also want to thank you know, the man behind all this, Coach P, you know, this guy. He's been a great mentor to me. He's uh, helped me out all these four years. And uh, you know, it's just been great. And also I want to thank my brothers and my family over here. You know, without these guys, also. You know, I'm just, I'm speechless right now. You know, it's, I'm, I'm happy to go out. My four years with a championship, a national championship. And I'm happy to bring it back to Louisville. You know, when I first committed here, I didn't know really know how to say Louisville. Guys, I said like Louisville, or so it was. I finally learned how to say it all after all the four years. But you know, I just want to say, you know, just go Cards. I'm going to sneak back on stage here because I know there's one more individual on this team. I, you'd like to hear from everybody, but I know there's one more we want to hear from. I, I'm with Kevin Ware. Kevin's... I know you, you've been through so much, you've been all over the place. I'm going to keep it simple, and I just want to start with this, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Honestly, I'm good. <laughs> the second question is even simpler. You had an opportunity to address your teammates, your coaches, You've had a chance to address the national media. You've had these phone calls with these amazing people. 
I want you to have an opportunity now to speak to our fans because I know that that really hasn't something you've had a chance to do. So I want you to share your thoughts and whatever you think for our fans here in the bill. Honestly, without you guys, we wouldn't be in the position we in now. You know, honestly, it's been a rough year, and we just put in our minds that we were going to win a national championship, and that's what we did. But without you guys, we wouldn't be here. And I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. And again. Trying to give a shout out to the girls for making it to the national championship game again, you know. But you guys have been amazing. You really kept me in good spirits, and I'm going to try to get back on the court as quickly as possible for you guys. Kevin Whale, ladies and gentlemen, I cannot wait to call your name again. It's going to be a great day. One of the great traditions that you get to enjoy when you reach this pinnacle is something we'll see as we get into the fall. I just, I just had somebody tell me in my ear, they want Russ. Congratulations. I'm gonna turn the mic over to you. You just tell the fans whatever you want, Russ. Well, not whatever you want. I know who we're dealing with you. Russ, just share your thoughts with the fans because obviously we want to hear from you. first day I stepped on campus, the first day I've been here, I stepped foot, I was hurt, and you guys waited patiently with open arms, and I got healthy, and you've supported me ever since, and I want to say thank you to all the fans who didn't give up on us last year, and we went on that amazing Final Four run. And I want to say thanks to the fans who's been with us, been with us all this year, who's been with us through the three-game losing streak, who's been with us through the five overtime loss. <laughs> and and as far as myself, uh, I just want to say thank you guys for for a tremendous three years here. And I'll never forget this place, and I love you guys all. All right. Before I was so rudely interrupted, does this mean we're going to go off script for a little bit? Congratulations, and just like I did with Russ, I'm just going to turn it over to you, give you, give you the floor to tell these fans about your experience winning a national championship this year. Uh, I don't know. I, ha I don't have no words to express that, but uh, one thing I know is uh, I've been here like, uh, I came in a long way. You know, uh, I learned a lot of stuff. 
be one of my friends and uh, they embraced me here and you know I love the school, the city and especially the fans so we can just thank them. Growing up in Senegal, is this something you could even dream of? No, like actually in my city, there are like uh, 22,000 people and you know, uh, this arena had 22,000 seats. <laughs> so, I've been very, uh, I'm very blessed to be a part of this and uh, I will never gonna forget this moment. Uh, it's something very special to me. Thank you, Brandon. Congratulations. Jordi Zeng, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we still got a little more program to go, so if we don't get to it, you let us know at the end, all right? One of the traditions that we'll share in the fall when the season starts up again is to raise a banner into the Raptors celebrating what these two teams have accomplished. But we figured, we've got y'all here. Why not just have a little sneak peek of what that might be like as the women celebrate as NCAA national runner-up. I think that's going to look awfully good in the Raptors. Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the women's basketball Cardinals, Jeff Walls. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I'd just first like to thank this group of young ladies that you see over here to my left. Um, It has been a, a remarkable year and one that I'll never forget and I've told all of them that in 10, 15, 20 years they'll all able, be able to look back and remember the memories that they've been able to establish here during this run. It is without a doubt one of the most remarkable runs in, in NCAA tournament women's basketball. We're also here today because we also would like to say congratulations to the men's program because we were following them and cheering them on as loud as we could on Monday night and it was quite a ball game to watch. I'm going to keep this real short but I can promise you one thing. We're excited and we're honored to have had the opportunity to play for a national championship two times in my six years here, but that's not our final goal. Our goal is to take one more step and be a national champion, and that's what we plan on doing. Thank you. Fans, just as we did with the women, we will also do so with the men. If you look on the other side, Let's take a look at that banner for the 2013 NCAA National Champions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, newly elected to the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, head coach, Rick Petito. Thank you. <clears throat> my, <clears throat> I've lost my, somewhat I've lost my voice, so if I sound like I'm whispering, it's because I have very little left. Jordan, such a right before the championship game, said, Coach, if we win this tonight, I've got calls from all the late shows, Morning shows, you can do whatever you want, and they'll fly you free. 
I said, just fly me to New Orleans. I want to see a great basketball team. Um, those of us who follow basketball know that probably the second greatest upset I've ever seen in my life was when Houston snapped that 70-game win streak of UCLA. And I say it's the second. The greatest upset in the history of college basketball is when we beat Baylor. I went home one after the five overtime loss, and my wife is like a horse trainer. She falls asleep at seven o'clock. She woke up and said, how the hell did you lose that game? I said, well, good evening to you also. The next morning when we woke up, she said, you gonna be all right? I said, yeah, we've got a new set of goals. And I told it to the team that afternoon. I said, we're gonna win our next seven. We're gonna win the last Big East tournament ever played in Madison Square Garden. Because we have the, one of the toughest schedules in the nation every year, you're then going to become the number one of number one seeds. Then we're going to move on to our second Final Four, only we're not going to cut down the nets along the way. Not until we win the national championship. Although, they were lofty, demanding goals. The most interesting thing about all of that was, as I watched all 13 of the guys, all they did was just shake their heads yes. There wasn't even a shred of doubt in their minds. They knew they had the character. They knew they had the talent. They knew they had the assistant coaches to get them through some great scouting reports. And without question, they wanted to do it for you the people who have been behind them from day one. <clears throat> so with back-to-back -back Big East championships, with back-to-back -back Final Fours, with a national championship, it's time to celebrate. It really is. And if you take after my children, nieces and nephews, you celebrate all night long. So, we have, without question, the best athletic director in the land. I'm not sure you know this, but we're currently number one on that all sports to win that trophy, the Capitol Trophy. We're number one in the nation right now. The biggest upset in bowl history with the Sugar Bowl, kicking the hell out of Florida. So that's where we are. Four years ago I said, we need a new brand. I've been here too long. I'm getting stale. I said, we need to really brand ourselves. And we came up with Louisville first. I told our great staff and coaches, I said, guys, let's re every recruit that we bring in here, he has to realize what he's coming into. We play for the front, not the back. We play for our city, our university, and our fans. So now I always preach, Louisville first, let's live for today, let's live in the present. But wouldn't it be great if we somehow got back to Dallas next year without living too much in the future?
I'll end with this. Last night on Bourbon Street, I needed a beer. I was up all night, and we went, and this one bar that my daughter told me about, I wanted to rekindle her trip to New Orleans because it was such a memorable trip, she told me, and I went to this place called the Beach Bar. And all of a sudden, our game was on television against the national championship game against Michigan, and I watched, and I was really blown away for the first time of the impact of how good our team was. I didn't think it was humanly possible for a young man to play with the desire, the conditioning, and the heart of Peyton Siva. I didn't think it was humanly possible. With, with the game somewhat in control, we needed something to get us over the hump, and I never saw five, six minutes of play like the Shane Bahannon gave us on that platform. When I saw him go up, get fouled, go up, get fouled, go up and get fouled, here I am, a 60-year-old man crying in a bar in Bur on Bourbon Street. It was just awesome. Uh, on behalf of, of all of us, the ladies, the men, uh, great assistant coaches on both teams who just worked their tails off, um, I just want to thank you. We represent what we think is the greatest university in America, the finest tradition in all of college basketball. Thank you.